Hi, my name is Yip. I'm a CEO and founder of Jedi. Our vision is to make peace more profitable than war. And we think so, and we think that we can do so by catalyzing collaboration. The love for the community. I really enjoyed being um, surrounded and exposed to a very diverse set of expertise, people from all across the globe, sharing and really sharing in a heartfelt way, authentically about their concerns, the technologies, their experience in, in building the foundational layer of this new technology. And, you know, I just love in-person events and it's a different level of connection and a different speed of knowledge acquisition. I think it's just the right place to be. Wow, that's a very deep question. So collective intelligence means, in my view, integrating individual intelligence in a level that is better than it was before. <laughs> and you can do it in many different ways. When you do it on a human level, it, it requires us humans, individuals, who contribute to decision making or who make the decision ourselves, um, to be very clear about what are our values, what are our needs, and how do we express these inner thoughts and feelings in a way that we reduce the gap between um, what we feel innerly and how we express it externally. When we can reduce that gap, then already the decision-making level will be much better because information um, quality is better. <laughs> and then you already can make better inferences have be better insights and better discussions and make better decisions out of that. So in a sense, you can use a lot of technology for that. For example, when I have difficult um, emails to write or messages to give, I can already formulate some bullet points into an assistant like GPT. <laughs> for, <laughs> and then I can ask it questions that, like, am I missing something? Is this uh, comprehensible? Uh, does it cover main aspects? What would be open questions left? And so already on myself, I can practice that. And if everyone in the team and in the company does that, then our general communication will be much more efficient and therefore also effective over time because we get to the point and we can talk about the real problems and reduce misunderstandings. Yeah, I think that depends on the data set that we use. Um, it also depends on who is at the table. So in order to have representation, we need to invest <laughs> into <laughs> this diversity at at the table. And that means um, first step, information and education about AI and how we contribute to these systems. And we, I, I think in general, like I am from Germany. When I was in elementary school, we had to learn how to ride a bike so we could safely contribute to, to traffic. <laughs> you, you have to make a bike license. <laughs> it's a bit of a game, but in the, in the end, you have to take an exam and you have to drive. And uh, the, the teacher would check if you know the rules, if you know what to do as a kid. And I think it's very similar as in when people start in big corporations, they have to take courses about cybersecurity. Right? How do I not get hacked? How do I not fall a victim to phishing scams and so, so on? So the same should actually be with AI. We should have d a basic literacy about how data works, how LLMs work, what happens with our data, how do we reduce certain risks, safety risks, uh, leakage risks, like what kind of data can I feed into the system? What kind of data should I feed into the system? And how do I do a quick check. So it's kind of learning basic thinking patterns and mental patterns to validate and check back instead of just blindly trusting the system. And, and I think that should actually not only be there with, with AI, it should be there with any system. 
like that critical thinking and how to discern what makes sense and what does not make sense and have a double check. And so now uh, getting back to the data, when we kind of know where are the blind spots or the problems, then we can actively invest into reducing that blind spot. So a very simple example is when we know <laughs> in the medical landscape, we don't have enough data about women populations, data sets in any kind of environment, then we need to create these data sets. And somebody's got to pay for that. And that should be then decided collectively, is that worth it? Should we reduce that blind spot and then allocate the funding for it? I really kind of have a positive outlook on that. I hate nothing more than repeating uh, tasks and a lot of things I feel uh, in my, even in my day, can be optimized and I don't need to do them again. I have also seen that, you know, there's a lot of other tasks. 10 years ago, 15 years ago, when e-commerce started to take off in Europe, a lot of tasks were about labeling data. Like, for example, when you have an e-commerce shop and a crawler, what you have to do is make sure that these crawlers uh, can read the data or put the data in a format that it can be displayed on the websites correctly. And it's all manual tasks, right? It's like you sit there, then you see, is this the shoe category? Okay, you label that shoe category in a certain way that the machine can, can learn it. And that created a bunch of industrial um, <laughs> it, it was like assembly line workers, but it's like data assembly line workers. And I feel like these kinds of tasks that are so of such repetitive nature are not really good to be done eight hours, 10 hours a day, five days a week. It kind of, in my view, has a very detrimental effect on um, our cognition abilities because we're just being trained to repeat, 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 repeat over years. So I think when these parts of our daily jobs can be taken away, it opens up a lot of new opportunities for us to focus on things we care about. Maybe we work fewer hours, but then we have time to be a coach in the local high school or local elementary school, or we work in an elderly care home where we can put one or two hours a week to taking our peers for a walk or bringing flowers to them, making their place look nice. Anything like this would be a possibility. And I don't think we will run out of tasks for humanity to do. There's so many um, things that are missing in terms of emotional capital that we as society can invest into with, if we had more time. <laughs> I really care about diversity mm. or equitable representation wherever I go. And I feel a lot of times when we are in technological domains, it takes an extra effort to lend a hand to someone who is not yet um, represented in the ecosystem and invite them to join and be that one person that actively encourages them and says, hey, no need to worry, no need to be afraid. If you have a little bit of an interest, come with me and I'll show you how everything works. Because that really makes a difference. And I think when we can do more of that, then we have more friends from different disciplines joining our industry and the industry needs that. So that would be my advice. Always have a look out for those who you want to have at the table and lend them an active hand. I feel truly inspired and nourished by the fast, past two days of inspiration. The, the content was very insightful. Um, the variety of speakers, the experience they brought with them, and the tone, the way of relationship between the members here on site was just very, very heart-centric. And I really enjoyed that. I feel more refreshed than I feel tired, even when we spend so many hours just pulling our brains together, trying to grasp 
anything and it, it just makes yeah it just makes a beautiful community thank you